there are nearly a thousand judgments that reserved in courts across the country. A report is showing 184 judgments have been outstanding for at least six months. This backlog means court orders are handed down long after the hearing is concluded, therefore delaying justice. This is a serious matter. Let's get more about this with Mbegezeli Benjamin from Judges Matter. Mbegezeli, good afternoon. Welcome to today. When you and I spoke a few weeks ago, you highlighted the fact that uh, there were more than 150, I think, at the time, uh, last, according to the last report by the Office of the Chief Justice of Outstanding Judgments. Now, in this report that's been updated to December last year, the number has gone up to 184 judgments outstanding for at least six months. This is not good. Uh, good afternoon, Brad Dan, and to the viewers at home. Yes, uh, it is not good. Um, it is really not a good picture that we, we see in the report. Um, not only has the number of judgments increased, but what we are also identifying in this report is that there is a recurrent theme in terms of the, the individual judges who um, are, have an, a number of judgments that are late but also we're seeing a, a really new phenomenon of acting judges being the ones who are causing a lot of the delays. So it is quite a cause for concern. And um, although, yes, we welcome that this report has finally been published after there were no reports in 2022, but we still have more questions than, than we do uh, have answers from, from this one report. What happens now if a, a judge has, 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 has moved on? Uh, and they have outstanding uh, judgments. So, so that is one of the big problems. So in the report and f consistently going all the way to 2018, um, there's one judge in KZN in particular who has been uh, having outstanding judgments. That judge has now gone on to retirement. But the duty and the responsibility to deliver the judgment still holds. So, so what sh should happen now is he should now be sent to the JSC for disciplinary proceedings because you can't but, leave the justice system or you can't leave the judiciary without having finished your job, which is to deliver judgments. So the consequence of the judge not delivering judgment is that there are disciplinary measures that follow. Can you name this KwaZulu-Natal judge? Uh, well, it, it, the name is there in the report. Uh, it, it's written as Judge Fansale J, uh, or, or Judge Fansale. Um, Judge I, I Fansale. The name. Yes. Yes. But there are there are a couple of others from from the different courts. Um, uh, the but, Labour Court. There's also a, a, a level of consistency in the people there. Um, in the KZN division as well, in, in different parts. And you'll remember earlier, um, or well, a couple of weeks ago now, there were two judges from the Gauteng division who were um, now recommended for suspension based on the failure to deliver judgments. So it who, is quite a serious thing. Yeah, the, 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 this report, the latest is coming from the Office of the Chief Justice. You've mentioned the Judicial Service Commission. Recently, we had two judges. I just remember the name of one because he's in the news quite a mm. lot in the Senzo Meiwa case. That's the Judge uh, Maumela. He's been recommended for suspension. Who should act against Judge Van Zale, for example? Yes. So it should be ideally um, the leadership of the, of the KwaZulu Natal High Court. So the judge president or the deputy judge president, because that judge was appointed to the KZN division. So they should file a complaint with the Judicial Service Commission and, the, the, and then the disciplinary process should start because how the, the disciplinary processes work is that there must be a complaint that is filed on affidavit and that triggers um, the process to start. And so there should be the judge president or the deputy judge president filing that complaint. Yeah, from, from, from talking to you previously, I understood that the judicial norms and standards have a, a set rule that judgments in both civil and criminal matters should generally not be reserved without a fixed date for handing down. And that if there is a delay, you can't do it no later than three months. But some of these, you say, go back many years. I mean, this is unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable, uh, unacceptable, Brad Dan. And you're quite right. The norms and standards are very clear on the 
then that the judgment must be reserved with a set date and it should then be delivered after three months. But there is a little bit of a leeway that is given to the judges. So for some of the busy case, uh, courts and particularly for complex cases, a judge can take four, five, up to six months, which is why this report that we have now only reports on those judgments that have taken six months or longer. Um, not to say that the ones that uh, have taken a little bit less are, are acceptable, but the six month ones are the red flags. And, and so what should ideally happen now is that once this report is, is released, the judge president of the court should approach the judge and say, give us a date for when you will hand down the judgment. What support can we give you in order for you to finalize the judgment, which might include that they may not allocate them maybe heavy cases so that they are able to deal with the, with the judgments or any other support that they need in order to finalize the judgment. If they still are not able to deliver the judgments, even when support has been offered, then it becomes a disciplinary uh, um, uh, question. And, and that's why the norms and standards are useful. And it's one of the most important legacies by Chief Justice Mukwen that now we have a measure uh, of, of performance of the courts. And when the judges fail to honor that performance, then there should uh, be action taken against them. Can the same kind of process you've just explained, uh, Megazeli, be applicable to acting judges? I mean, some of them that have been mentioned include the acting judge Albert Eilert of the Kimberley High Court with 10 late reserve judgments. You've got acting judge Tessa Leroux of the Western Cape High Court with eight late judgments. You've got Judge Robert Lichranzi of the Cape Town Labor Court with 10 outstanding judgments as of December 2022, but apparently two have since been delivered from the reports I've seen. But can the same process happen against acting judges? So the acting judges are a little bit of a, um, a complicated one because most acting judges are either practicing attorneys or practicing advocates. That means they are appointed for a short period in order for them to act as judges. And after that period ends, they go back into practice. And that is actually where the problem starts because once you go back to your office or to your chambers and to practice, then you sort of forget about the judgment and, and you, you take on other work that relates to your practice. And it, it becomes harder and harder as each day passes for you to go back and write the judgment. So. The, the problem that we have, and I think the Legal Practice Council should now come on board on this, is that there should be clear rules to say, if you're an acting judge, you are legally obligated to deliver the judgment. Even if you go back to practice, you are legally obligated to, to deliver the judgment. And if you don't do so, the Legal Practice Council should take action against you because acting as a judge is, is an honor. Um, it's a public service. And if you're failing to do that, then that calls into question your abilities mm. as a because, practitioner. Yeah, as because well. I would imagine it, it delays justice. There'll be a lot of aggrieved people who went to, who, there was a trial, the, the, then there's a reserve judgment, and then three months, four months, six months, one year later, even or more, there still, still have been no, no, no ruling. I see in Begazel that the constitutional court as well is under pressure, uh, according to reports I've seen, that they've also got an, an, a number of outstanding judgments since November 2022. And there's a list of them I've seen in one, in one media report. Yes, uh, according to the latest reports from the Office of the Chief Justice, the Constitutional Court only has one judgment um, that is outstanding. But from our knowledge, and, and which is why it is so important that the OCJ releases these reports regularly, because if you look at this one report in isolation, you would think that the Constitutional Court is performing well. They only have one judgment outstanding. But we do know, for example, that there, that there was an urgent uh, hearing into the suspension of the public protector that was heard in November. It's been six, more than six months, and that judgment has still not been delivered. There have been a number of judgments that have taken seven months, eight months, up to 10 months that have only recently been delivered. And so they wouldn't show up in this particular report. So. We, we need transparency from the OCJ. They need to be releasing this information regularly so that we are able to keep track of the performance of, the high, of, the, of all the courts, particularly mm. the Constitutional Court. And at the same time, and I, I don't want to be unfair uh, on the Constitutional Court, they have been putting in place measures 
to try and turn around the work much quicker. So if you look at the judgments that were heard in the second half of 2022, a lot of them have been delivered within the six month window, which is great, but it is not showing in the reports. And so, so that's why the OCJ also needs to up its game in terms of the information it provides. Yeah, the likes of Judge Maumela, do they feature in this report that, we, that you've seen, Begazeli? Not uh, as far as I've seen uh, in the report. I might, I might have missed something, but okay. not as far as I've seen. I'm, um, I'm asking because in the interest of transparency, I guess uh, the, the office of the Chief Justice has to, to name everybody, every judge who's got an outstanding uh, a judgment, a reserve judgment, and, and also, as you've just said, accountability and, and transparency is very, very important on a consistent basis. Hence, you want these reports, as you've said, to be issued as regular as possible. Yes, absolutely. Transparency is the name of the game. And accountability too, right? Um, transparency, accountability are the core principles that we have in our constitution. And our judiciary is also under an obligation, just like parliament and the government have a responsibility to be transparent and accountable the judiciary must also be accountable and so these reports go a long way in, in achieving the transparency part now we now just need to see the accountability come in where judges are held responsible for delivering judgments on time yeah knowing what you know and in this report this is my final question in begazelli to you is the judiciary failing us no, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say the judiciary is failing us. Um, yes, it is a problem that we are not getting um, the judgment on time, at least some judgment on time. But like I said, when you look at the reports over a longer period of time, you will notice that it's, it's probably a few individuals and, and there are about 250 something judge, judges across the system. So the vast majority of our judges do deliver judgment on time. It is a few that perhaps are, are not delivering those judgments on time, but there are other systemic issues, like we spoke about the last time, that we know the judiciary is not adequately resourced in terms of um, the research capacity that they need, administrative support that they need, and also just having more judges to be able to carry or uh, to carry what is a really really heavy workload. So I don't think at this stage you can say that our judiciary is failing us. It does need support and there needs to be a little bit more accountability, but it's far too soon to say that it is failing. Yeah, and action has to be taken against those few judges who are really delaying the delivery of justice through these long periods of uh, uh, outstanding uh, or reserved judgments. Thank you very much, Mbegezeli Benjamin from Judges Matter. Now,